good to be here, man. Hopefully, yeah, that thing might need to be above. Like, just pinch it onto your... Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. What's, the, what's the name of your business? Like, as far as you're, you're cutting hair and stuff, do you just go by Alec, the barber, or...? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, we, we have a business, the Rock Barbers. That's the, the name of the, of, the, of the business of the shop cool. um, that, we were, uh, that we were at. Cause we, you know, we had a, we had a shop, a location in, um, for five and a half years. And then we shut that down at the beginning of COVID. Yeah. Um, in the process of like getting into a bigger space. And so, um, because of COVID and because of just the inflation and the rate of everything, you know, yeah. uh, we decided to just take a minute to, to, um, just kind of game plan and, um, develop a strong business plan moving forward, especially if we were planning on like buying purchasing a building or you know dumping a decent amount of money into a, a spot right right and so in this time we've just been freelancing out of our out of our places uh set up a little studio here you remember julio do you remember julio yeah, yeah, yeah. julio set up a studio out of his place so we've just been working like do you that think it's do you think it's more convenient to to work as a group of barbers uh, instead of like freelancing by yourself oh yeah man i mean it's not it's convenient in the fact that like, um, I would say it's more like, it's just better, right? It's just better, like better vibe, better atmosphere. Yeah. If there's, if there's like some unity between you guys, right? Yeah. There's gotta be unity. You guys got, you guys gotta enjoy working with each other. People gotta enjoy working with each other. Um, cause you could always have that negative person in, in a workplace that you're just like, yep, it sets everything off. Right. Yeah. So when we, like when me, Dylan and Julio were working together, um, it was fun, man. Our, our, we got to see like, uh, how our conversations, like how we connected with each other would, uh, um, make an impact on our clients, you know, Yeah. make, make the day go by better too. Fun. Like just hearing different stories, all that stuff. And then you also just, uh, bring on, uh, a bunch of different like clients, right? So every client that comes in gets to build a relationship with another client, right? Yeah. And I think that right there uh, was fun. I remember having, we would have like, um, let's say Fridays for, I don't know, man, consistent like a couple, couple years, right? Like maybe two, three years. We'd have the same clients on Friday at certain times, like, we know that every Friday or every other Friday at three o'clock, these people are coming in because that's just how it went, right? They, yeah. they would schedule those times. So the cool thing is you, got, you, you get to see those clients build relationships with one another. And then everyone's just waiting for that, for that day, you know, when, when uh, yeah. we, we know on Friday at three o'clock, Joe, Steve, and freaking Eddie are coming in, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, conversations that you had last week are going to continue probably that week and new things that are happening. And so it's always cool. So I think that's the benefits of like working with, with other people, you know? Yeah. Having other barbers in the shop or in the place instead of working by yourself it can get yeah. boring. I, I've known other barbers who choose to do the freelance. Yeah. Simply just cause it makes more money. Okay. Yeah. Or, or just cause they don't have to compete. With, mm. with the other barbers and stuff like that yeah um what are some of the difficulties as far as like working on your own because i know that there's a lot of benefits to, to cutting hair um but besides the the social aspect of it what are some of the difficulties in it <clears throat> the difficulties of like working alone or just the difficulties of barbering a little bit of both working alone as a barber working alone um Working alone as a barber, I mean, it just gets lonely sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it just gets lonely, man. Yeah. You, uh, you know, you, you're just alone with the client, and again, right? It's perspective, but it's like, uh, <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> you get lonely. Uh, again, right? Like, your 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 client could come in and you know just be very quiet, right? And um, not, yeah. not want to, not really, he's, not, that's the type of client that doesn't really engage much. He just wants to come in, get his hair cut. Right. Right. And, that's uh, typically me. 
Yeah. Get it done. Yeah. I and that's fine. That. That's fine. I, I enjoy that because in the, in the middle of that, you know, like, I think it's a great balance. There's definitely some clients that come in and they'll talk your ear off, right? Yeah. Yeah. And they don't give, they don't give you room to breathe. Um, and then there's other clients that, uh, you know, are more quiet and, um, uh, it's the complete opposite. They're just they They tell you in the very beginning, yeah, this is what I want and blah, blah, blah. And then you ask a couple questions, maybe mid cut, but you feel like the, like they're not really trying to build on their response, you know? Yeah. Um, and so then you just let it be like, I'm totally okay with that. Like I'm fine with that because it honestly gives me time to, uh, to just sit in my thoughts, man. You yeah. know, just kind of ponder on some things. Sometimes I'll be cutting somebody and I'm thinking of what I'm going to do later. How, you know, yeah. I'm thinking of things that I probably wouldn't be necessarily thinking of if, if, if in, a, in, in the middle of a conversation, right? So I think that's a, there's a nice break in that. So, but that's the difficulty is that like it sometimes just gets lonely. Um, you don't have anybody to feed off of, right? Right. Um, and then I guess when freelancing as a barber, some of the difficulties... Uh, is uh, your your accessibility to people yeah like being in a shop you know that you're in one place right and any, anybody can come to you right and they know where it's at and um, you know it's easy to market that but when when you are freelancing and you're kind of moving from place to place uh, you it's kind of like being uh, like uh, like traveling barber right it's yeah you uh, you probably have to you got to understand that you're, you're most likely, uh, people aren't going to like the inconsistency of where you're at, you know? Right. And so that's where it can be a little bit more difficult. You really have to market yourself well and try to figure out like, okay, where are the best places to be at, you know, um, to maintain strong, like a strong, uh, clientele list throughout the weeks, throughout the months, all that. What do you think is the hardest thing about marketing, uh, your, your barbershop? Shoot, man. Well, dude, I think nowadays there's really not a lot of, it's not that difficult to market yourself, right? With just the accessibility of social media platforms and social media in general, the internet, right? Yeah. I think uh, anybody can truly just market themselves. Um, again, it's, it's uh, one of the difficulties, I guess, with that in regards, in, 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 the, in the process of marketing yourself compared to other places is... Um, what, what I think could be a problem is <clears throat> not enough people can testify or be a witness, you know, can more so testify um, of like, and say a good word over your, over what you do for what you do, like the craft that you do. Yeah. So like, I can market myself, I can say, you know, uh, this is my barbershop, I could put it out there, glamorous pictures, you know, quali like quality cuts, but if there's not enough people who can almost like review, right? Like a Yelp review say, oh no, I've been there, I've tested it, it's the real deal, they're good. If you don't have that, that's where it will set you, it, it will actually set you back from other places. I see. In, 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 in the grand scheme of marketing, right? Yeah. Because you can post a ton of great stuff, but if you have no actual um, people that can testify the, of the experience, then right. you're just another page that looks good, you know? Yeah. If that makes sense. It does. For me, as, as a construction worker, when I had uh, the business going, um, one of the hardest things was, was getting people to, to give a review. It was to give what? To give a review. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I used to be the kind of guy that people would be like, oh, give us a review. Don't forget to, here's a, on your receipt, there's a, a review you can fill out and blah, blah or a questionnaire, uh, just if you could fill that out. I used to always like, oh yeah, yeah sure. And then I'd throw the receipt away right out the door. <laughs> and then as when I became a business owner, mm -hmm. that was one of the things that I was like, man, karma. <laughs> Dude, yeah, bro. <laughs> Somebody just the other day, uh, we went to Boiling Crab. You know, have you ever been there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fire, but uh, he was like super adamant about telling us uh, about us filling out this survey, you know? Yeah, and yeah. when you fill it out, make sure to put my name, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Nick. We forgot to tip you. My bad, brother. If you're seeing this, <laughs> my bad. We walked out in the middle of conversation and forgot. So we're going to hook you up next time. 
But uh, yeah, he was like, yo, can you, you know, fill out the survey um, just to let it's it, it, what for them, right? What's the reason behind that? It's because it probably helps them in their in that specific. It's like a benefit to them, right? For, of course. In that workplace. And they're probably getting some type of like a compensation through work too. like, hey, if you guys have enough good reviews and you I don't know, you get a bonus or something like that. Right. So he's going to make sure to make people fill out uh, those reviews, even if it's just an extra forty dollars or twenty dollars or whatever it is. Right. Yeah. Yeah. For me, one of the things that really impacted me impacted me that made me change my mind on reviewing and giving people a shout out yeah was i had i had done one job and i did it really really cheap and it was one of those jobs that i, I ended up actually putting money on instead of winning money oh man and so i lost money and i also ended up paying some just because i underestimated the, the size of the project yeah but whatever i said you know what it's part of the business life, you know, you, you win some, you lose some. Yeah. So I kind of I buckled up and, and I, I ate the costs. Yeah. And these people were so nice that they left a really, really good review. Like they wrote a, a whole book on Nextdoor. Oh, wow. And so they were like, oh, this guy, he did an amazing job and, and blah, blah. They put pictures on there and they were talking about how happy they were and how their kids are going to be able to enjoy this when they're older and... This house is going to be, you know, left for generations. Yeah. And it's, they were glad they were the ones able to hire me to, to build. Yeah. And that review alone brought in like 20, 30 other clients. Sheesh. So in the grand scheme of things, I feel like reviewing and actually shouting people out on what they do. Yeah. It's like the biggest thing for business. Oh, absolutely, Which is man. why now I understand when, when they have that on the receipts, like, you know, write a survey on, on your, whoever helped you out. Yeah. Not only do they have benefits because they're doing a good job, but it's also bringing in a lot of business. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So with yeah. reviews, I used to pay for, for leads. I used to pay for, uh, for people to, like, give me a call. Yeah. Um, when I first started the, the business and then I think like six months into it with, with just word of mouth, I, I was so busy that like even putting it on schedule was hard. Mm. Like I had to tell people, sorry, I'm, I'm a month behind, um, before you can, before you can see me for an estimate really. Sheesh. That's crazy. And I feel like. In the barber business, it's pretty similar because nowadays to get a hold of a good barber and, and tell them, hey, you know, when, when can you cut my hair? They're always like, uh, probably like next month or, you know, two months from now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. No, that's true, bro. Especially like, oh, that was a, that's been an issue. <laughs> I mean, nowadays they make those great apps, right? Like Booksy, Genbook, uh, Square. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a couple other apps where you can, you know, it's a... a a service that will schedule like you don't even have to touch it right you just set like your hours your availability out in advance you know obviously your prices and all that and people will go on there and uh and book right yeah um and uh it's, it's just a and they also can leave reviews on there and all that so it's a great way to market and a great way to just like uh obviously book people down but uh the problem that i was facing was that one being kind of involved in the church and, and uh, doing a lot of stuff on a, on a, you know, throughout the week and on the weekends at times, whether it be like conferences coming up or whatever it was, right? Yeah. Um, I couldn't really have my schedule put out in advance that far out. I couldn't just open up the whole year and say, you know, people book whenever you want, you know, because yeah. may, they may book on March 13th when that's like a, a conference or something, you know? And then I have to go and cancel everyone on that day. So then what I would do is I would only allow my schedule to go out two weeks in advance. And this is a little tip, a little like um, little strategy that I'd used. I would set my schedule out to only be seen two weeks in advance. So if somebody went on my booking app, they would only see up to two weeks, right? So they would see like, oh, 
this guy has got availability like this coming up Wednesday and next Friday, right? And then it shows nothing else for the rest of the for the rest of the month or whatever. And so I would So be, if they wanted to book you, they had to wait until midnight until that next day after the two weeks was clear so they <laughs> Oh yeah, that's that was a thing, right? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh no, but uh what I would do is uh I would let them know like, "Oh, I'm actually booked up for the rest of the month." Like so I have these two days that are open, but I'm uh it's because the rest of the month is booked. Yeah. They're like, "No way, dude. Like what the heck?" So I would tell them, "So if you want to get in, like let me get you in right now or let me get you in um in a in uh let's say they say they wanted to get a haircut that day, but I was booked up, right? Yeah. I couldn't get them in cuz at our shop, we didn't take walk-ins. We took walk-ins upon availability. Right, right. So it was like, if we had the opening, we would get them in. But usually, it was all by appointment, right? Yeah. And so somebody walked in. I tell them, hey, we can either schedule you down for an appointment in three weeks, because that's when my next opening is, or, um, or you could uh, you could fill you could fill in uh, like put your name down right now. And uh, if somebody cancels within within the day or the next day or whatever, we'll call you and you can come in, right? But yeah. I told them, but hey, I'm booked up for the next month. Although my schedule only went out two weeks. I'm booked up for the whole month. So I'd, I'd rather put you down right now for three weeks, even if you went and got a haircut somewhere else, knowing that you already have your appointment with me in three weeks. Yeah. If that makes sense. And they would always be like, yo, I need a, if I don't put it down now, I'm basically not going to get in at all, you know, yeah. ever. So they would, they would book it in three weeks, go get a haircut. This is if they were a first timer, right? They would go get a haircut somewhere else and then already have their appointment with me for three weeks. Right. Yeah. And so it worked out, man, where I did that consistently. And it, what it did is it built it up. It built up this, this kind of, uh, hype around myself. I was making the hype for myself, even yeah. though I wasn't booked up for the whole month, you know, people would think like, Oh dude, this dude is actually, He's booked up, you know? Yeah, yeah. So that's it worked out. Thing. What happened? And that's a good thing. Oh, yeah. It was a good thing for sure. If, if for sure it was a good thing because I'm, in a way, I'm telling people like, yo, I'm, 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 I'm really booked. I'm not going to be able to get you in until like X amount of time. But in reality, like probably within the next two weeks, I could have got him in, right? Yeah. And so then they're looking at my calendar. They're looking at they're looking at me. It's like, okay, this dude is good at what he does. That's why he's so booked up, you know. So I better lock something in with him right now. And it worked. I mean, the next time they came in, I gave them a uh, you know gave them a good service and locked them in as clients. Every single every after every appointment, I usually uh, try to book them down um, for the next. Right. I'll let them know. I'll be like, hey man, um, you could either text me when you want to get in. For the next one or we can put it down right now um, if you know your schedule and you know when you want to come back in that way it eliminates that whole all right i'm going to text you throughout the week or i'm going to i'm going to try to go on your uh on your app and and find a spot then you know yeah because the problem with that is that people would say yeah i'm just going to go and check the app later on they go and check the app they see that nothing is available then they text me and say hey when can you get me in right. so just to avoid all of that i'll just be like let's just book it right now in advance if you know uh your schedule like that and most of the times people that didn't really didn't really know like their schedule or what they would be doing um eventually got to the point where uh they started to like schedule their haircuts out and and it ended up being you know being being cool being like working out for both yeah both of us so this is one of those fields that you have to be pretty, pretty well um, disciplined as far as like keeping keeping a schedule intact. Because even like for me, I'm one of those people that just I'll notice. Okay, my hair's getting long. Yeah. But I don't do the the whole like every two weeks I'm gonna go get a cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it takes discipline. It takes like actually having to sit there and be like, you know what, fill out a schedule and, and mark what you do during the week, what you do every day. Yeah. And I feel yeah. like that's one of those things that a lot of people just don't have anymore. Unless you work in like an office. Mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. People think that just being disciplined enough to, to even keep up with your, with your hygiene, with your, with your look. Yeah. Yeah, you got to look good, baby. Come yeah. on, man. Even for me, I got to admit, I get lazy sometimes because... 
I'm busy. I'm sweaty. I'm at work. Yeah. yeah. I work in a, in a field that just looks aren't a thing. Like, yeah. Yeah. Everyone that works around me is, is kind of burly. Yeah. Yeah. Cause they're just there to, to make that money. Yeah. Yeah. You just grind. They work long hours. Yeah. You know, sometimes all you do is, is go to work and sleep, go to work and sleep. Yeah. And, and so to think about, Oh, I got to go and, and get a haircut. It's the last thing on your mind. It's the last thing on your mind, especially if like on a weekend, on a day off, you're like, oh, I got to run all these errands because mm -hmm. all week I've been tied up with work and staying busy. Yeah. So that's definitely one of those things that you got to you gotta count every hour of your day mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and stay, stay on top of it. I have those clients, man, that I only see maybe twice a year. You know, they book every like six months or something like that, you know? Yeah. And uh, they, don't really, they don't really, you know, care too much or they like to have their hair grow out or whatever it is, right? Um, and that's cool, it, you know, it kind of, it can work for people, but uh, I think there's something about like uh, keeping up on your, on, your, on, your, uh, on your look, you know? Like yeah. ma maintaining and, and uh, that self-care that self of like, you know, doing something for yourself yeah. In the in the most in the most practical basic way, like a haircut is a good way to do that, you know. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I love to make people look good, you know. Yeah. And I remember, I have a a memory of this one client. I had just gotten a haircut, and I had just bought some new work clothes. I, I I was looking as clean as as I'd ever looked. Yeah. And I remember go, going to this guy's house and to do this estimate. And when I walked into his door, first thing he said, he's like, you know what, man, you're too expensive. Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> like, of how I you looked, right? I was like, I haven't even talked to you about my prices. He was like, you're too clean. He's like, the last guy that came in here, he was, his, his whole t-shirt was full of paint. <laughs> yeah. His shoes were torn up and taped up. And yeah. he gave me a pretty good price. And I, I just have a feeling your price is not going to be his mm. price. And I remember I, I laughed and I was like, you know what? I'm still going to give you my card. I left him with my, my card and all that. And like, I think it was like two weeks later, he gives me a call. He's like, hey, man, can you come give me a quote? Um, I know you gave me a price of 7000 Yeah. But this guy gave me a price of 4000 And, uh, well, it, it just, it looks, it looks really bad. So you did a really bad job. Everything's not leveled. There's all kinds of mistakes. So I, I went by to take a look, and I was like, "All right, well, this is gonna cost you. This is gonna cost you like nine thousand now." Yeah. Wow. And he was like, "You quoted me seven thousand before," and I was like, "Well, you gotta I fix mean, these mistakes, man." Pretty much. Yeah. You know, and, and now what would have cost you seven thousand? ended up costing him 13,000 cuz he spent the 4,000 on, mm. on the first guy and then he didn't show up anymore cuz he didn't want to deal with the homeowner being so picky. Sheesh. Have you heard that uh that saying like uh the it's like cheap good and fast? Have you heard that? Oh, yeah. Like that analogy I think that they or that they Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to tell that to my clients all the time too. You got to pick you, you got to pick, pick two. two. <laughs> yeah. Like you, you want, want it, it, yeah. If you want it uh, cheap and fast, it's not gonna be good. If you want it fast and good, it's not gonna be cheap. I think that's such a great, uh, just a great saying, you know. Yeah. And it's so true. It really is. If you want all three of them, it's gonna cost you. You know. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think uh, for. Uh, um, for uh, like barbering, it's like you said. You walked, you walked up in there. You uh, the guy automatically assumed like, man, this guy's pretty polished up. This is probably gonna be a. Uh, it left an impression on him, you know. Immediately. Yeah, yeah. the first impression was like, okay, well, this dude kind of he cares in a way, you know. He's like, he's he's sharp. He's he probably knows what he's doing. It's kind of like a. Uh, <laughs> It, it can be um, deceiving at times, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah, because I've had the opposite happen to me, too, where 
maybe I didn't have the the right clothes on because it was a weekend and, and I was like dressed up for something else. And yeah. I was overdressed. And so I remember another client told me too, he was like, you know, you, you don't look like you do this mm. for a living. And I was like, I, I guarantee I do. And I had to literally prove to him by showing him like pictures of me doing the work. Damn, that's where, crazy, Where he was man. like, oh, okay. So you're like, you yourself do it. Yeah. Because I don't want you to just send some guys that, you know, you, you tell me one thing and they do another. Mm. A lot of people care more about that relationship. And, and if you're going to tell them something, they want you to carry it through. Yeah, yeah. As opposed to like, oh, yeah, yeah, like, here's the price. Here's what it's going to cost you for me to do this. And then they agree and then someone else shows up. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, a lot of people are just looking for the one person they can trust as opposed to hiring a company. And what's funny is a lot of people, when they start a company, they start doing it themselves and people get mad because they grow mm. to a point where now they can't do it and they have to send somebody else. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I guess that's just kind of how companies work. I mean, that's, that's business, man. But, you know, a good business is going to do a good job of developing um, you know, their, uh, their team, right? Yeah. And pouring out, um, into them what has helped them be set apart. Right. So like, if you're a good, if you're, if, you know, being a barber for myself, you know, you gotta be, we, you gotta be, you have to be cautious and careful of who you, of who I would bring on into work into, into a barbershop. Right. I would want to make sure that in, in one way or another, they, they kind of value the same things that I value. Like there's some commonality there, right? Um, like, like working hard, you know, pursuing excellence in, in your cuts, right? Yeah. Not perfect, but, you know, really working, at your, working on your craft to, to get better, right? Um, building relationships, like all that stuff, right? Like there's some core things that, that we would have um, in common, as well as like, um, like attitude, how you show up to, to work, right? Yeah. All that presentability, like there's sometimes for barbers, like it's kind of like the mechanic, the mechanic's car is always broken down, right? It's the last thing that he wants to work on just because he's been working on other people's car, right? Yeah. Um, for barbers, sometimes we're the last to get haircuts. <laughs> yeah. We're walking around with a busted haircut and I'm just like, after a day of cutting everyone, I'm just like, man, I wish somebody would would clean me up, you know? Yeah. I wish I had a barber to clean me up, but uh, definitely, you know, in, 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 a, in a way, being presentable, so that's a big thing. You know, when, when clients come up, people walk up, sometimes they'll pick their barber off of who's got, who, like, do they got a crispy fade? Oh, yeah, if they got a crispy fade, that means that they know, they know what's up. They know how to cut, right? It's kind of the, I guess that's like a myth in a way. It's not always true. Yeah, because, I mean. It's a big myth, you know? For me, I grew up, my parents, my mom was a house cleaner, a housekeeper for a long time. And that's the last thing she wanted to do when she got home. Clean? She, was, she didn't, she was, she would just straight up just tell us all like, you know what? I'm going to teach you guys how to clean the way I clean at work. Mm -hmm. Because one day if you get a job, you're going to have to learn how to do things. Yep. And I don't want them to, to treat you like I'd never taught you how to clean. Yep. And so... We ended up, in a way, having to become housekeepers and house cleaners, too. There you too. go. Because if not, we were going we to get one when we got home. <laughs> but that was one of the things with my mom. She'd get home, and that's the last thing she wanted to do. Was, yeah. I don't want to clean this house, but this house better be clean. It better be clean. Yeah, and exactly. You, you knew, you knew what, how she wanted it clean, right? Right, right. Yeah, and that's like going back to that, like of... Uh, training people, developing great, great leaders or other, uh, developing your, your employees, um, to the point where, you know, when you can't go out there and be on the, on the job site and, and people only are coming to you because they, or people want you to go and do the job because, you know, they encountered you, they know you, right. The, the, right. that's where you're able to be like, well, we'll check it out. Like, you know, we've done a good job of developing our, our team, you know, our so people. So in a way, you end up having to kind of, like, clone yourself. Yeah, or, you kind of, you pour out to them, right? 
teach people to do things the way you do them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then and, and give them the, the, the space to, to bring in their own unique, you know, abilities and things. You know, it's like you, you never know. This guy might come and do uh, somebody, somebody else might take on one of my clients and he might give them a better cut than I did, you know. Yeah. And now he's like, yo, actually, he's having some, he's feeling convicted because he's got to cheat on me and he's got to, he's got to, he's got to divorce, you know, he's got to divorce me. <laughs> you got to have go, a conversation. But, but yeah, we got to have a conversation. It's not you, it's me. <laughs> but hey, no, it's, it's what we want, right? It's what, yeah. like, we want to develop these people. We want to, we want to make sure that, uh, uh, that what we're pouring out into them is actually, you know, they're, they're putting it to use and that people, when they come, when they, uh, when they step into that place that they know, like, oh no, man, it's not just Felipe that does a good job. Well, in, in your craft, in your area, but his whole crew, like he yeah. can send whichever one of them and they're going to take care of me, you know? I think that there's something to be said about that, you know? Because yeah, they're working under your standards. Exactly. And you're also doing a, a good job of, of being the leader, you know, of pouring out into them. Yeah. Imagine if you were the only good one, bro, and everyone always needed you, but you had a team and you were always saying, ah, all right, well, I'm going to go. Well, I'm going to wait for, for you, even if it takes me two, three months. Exactly. Yeah, no, that's, that'd be brutal, you know? Yeah. And there's going to be some situations that are like that, you know? They're just going to, people are going to have a little bit more trust in you, and they're going to want, want that. Um, and that's okay, but uh, it can't be for everything, you know? And that's where I feel like a lot of people, like, the, we've lost the specialists. You know, people that, that would do one thing at a time, and that's all they do. Mm. I feel like a lot of people now, including myself, I'm a jack of all trades. Like Master of none? Master of none, but I, I always make it a point to whatever I'm learning, to try to learn it at least to a, a level of where I can get paid for it. Mm. It's good enough to get paid for and, and earn a decent living off of it. Yeah. But it's not, it's not like I'm not a pro. Yeah. You know, and that's where a lot of people, um, a lot of people end up doing that where they don't stick to one thing because of whatever reason. Yeah. For me, I just, I had ADHD growing up and OCD. Yeah. And so the ADHD kind of made me learn a lot of the things that I didn't, I didn't really trust other people doing for me. Mm. And so it. I had a short attention span, and so the things I liked, I ended up learning to a, to a level that I would feel comfortable people paying me to do. Mm. And so I ended up learning how to how to do graphic design, photography, videography. Yeah. Um, you know, some marketing. I ended up con doing construction. I learned music. I learned all kinds of skills that I just enjoyed, but. When it comes to business, you'll you'll make a pretty decent living if you're you know if you're an intermediate intermediate pro. But to make the good money or to to be really blessed and really skilled, you have to actually care enough to to stick to one thing. Mm hmm. Yeah, man. Yeah, that you, like you said, it. I think there's not enough of that, right? Yeah. Because we're always trying to jump onto the the newest trend or the newest thing that is popping off. Um, and not fully developing in one thing, just, just grasping it enough, like, you know, to be decent at it. But, um, that's what, that's what separates people who are like really disciplined, bro. Yeah. I think of like those Japanese woodworkers, you know, like, have you ever seen those dudes? Yeah. yeah. Like that aren't you, they're not using like, like skill saws and, or like powered saws or anything. They're like chiseling they away at even, things. They don't even use, uh, screws. Yeah, or screws, right? It's all like, what do they call that? Uh, um, what kind of... Uh, they, they use all kinds of, of bow tie, mm -hmm. miter cuts, and, and everything slips together, joints. Yep. yep, you have all those different joints. Yeah, that's crazy, bro. You know how the amount of time, patience, yeah. it takes to do all that stuff? And, I mean, to master it, right? To become a master at that. It's like, nowadays, we'll just plug in a saw, you know? And yeah throw a, a, a screw in there and it can still be quality work it can still be really good but uh there are some crafts that really just require 
for that thing to be the only thing that you spend your time on, you know, to get, to get like really, really good at it. And yeah, it'd be the main thing. Kristen, what do you think so far? How's it looking? It's coming together, huh? He was shaggy. He was real shag. I, uh, the cuts that, uh, that I give, man, they have the power to, <laughs> they got, you know, they got the juice, they got the juice, you know, to, to do stuff like that. I tell them though, I say, uh, but if, if the, if the D doesn't end up getting done, you know, it's, it wasn't the haircut. That's not part of the guarantee. That's not the haircut. It's, it's the individual at that point now, you know? How have you guys been enjoying the father's house, man? That is a loaded answer. <laughs> loaded question. A loaded question, yeah. It's, it's a good way to put it. It's a, it's definitely been a loaded, loaded uh, season. Yeah. yeah. It's everything. In a good way. Yeah. Everything yeah. we need. Yeah. Wow. I'm gonna have you look up again more. There you go. There's moments where I'm there and I'm just watching everyone and I'm thinking, I wish, I wish there were people out there that knew that there were churches out here like this. Mm. With this much passion. Mm. Charisma? Yeah, I mean, for sure. Man, the, the vision of this church, too. Like, y'all are actually doing something. It's not hey, we home. are, man. That's You made that your home, right? Mm -hmm. So. It's not just dreams and vision. It's a lot of action. Yeah. Yeah, man, you got to give it up to, you know, that's, that's a, that's a pastor's man. That's. He's a visionary. He's he's like I told you early, you know, early on. He's got that apostolic gift, and you know, of starting things and sending things and and, and starting things and moving on and um, birthing new things and uh, you know, sending out people. It's like he's a and he's a dreamer. He's a dreamer, but he's also he's also a doer. You know, there's a lot of dreams there um, and a lot of a lot of vision, but. Uh, um, he'll he'll take a he's a he'll take a risk. He'll take steps. Oh yeah. You gotta like today we were talking and um, he was like, you gotta be willing to lead um, with risk, you know. Yeah, that's one of my favorite things I, I heard uh, Tim Ross say is, if you're scared, do it scared. Yeah, man. It's not gonna get done if you if you wait until you're. Until you're comfortable with it. Yeah, yeah. And that's one of those things, that, one of the big reasons why I decided to just go out and do this. Because if I wait until I'm good in front of a camera, mm -hmm. it's never going to get done. Yeah. Yeah, dude. That's so true. You got to take the risk, right? You got to bet on yourself, man. You got to put in reps. Yeah. So and it's just a small, it's a, like in a small practical way, right? Yeah. We get a, I think we get a, we make it seem bigger than what it is. Yeah. And I mean, a, a lot of, a lot of it has to do with this comparison trap that we, that we will allow ourselves to fall into by looking at other people's platforms, or other people's, other people's, you know, fifth year when we're on our 10th day, you know? Yeah. And, uh. You just got to be careful of that. It's great to be inspired by those things, but at the same time to be, you know, be content with where you're at and uh, and give where you're at everything you got, you know? Yeah, I know for me personally, um, stepping out to do turn. things like this has been really, well, it's been, it's been really like God called, you know, like, 
a lot of the things I'm doing now I know I don't want to do mainly because I'm lazy or I'm fighting my own insecurities or just killing my own flesh yeah and it's funny because it's the biggest it's the biggest time in my life where I feel like I'm the most blessed mm. and I was, I was telling Pastor Matt like and I was telling my wife like this season has been really slow as far as, far as like financially there's yeah. always a dip in construction during the winter and stuff like that where it gets a little slow yeah and so you kind of prepare yourself the rest the, the rest of the year to like face this kind of uh financial drought yeah know? yeah yeah. but it's been one of the slowest years i feel like ever at least in my life yeah and so it's funny because even though i should be panicking or I should be more worried than I am. Yeah. I'm really not. Mm. It's funny. I've worked maybe two days in the past month. The rest of the time has just been time off. Just chilling. Yeah. And most people would be panicking by like the second week or the first week even. Yeah. And I'm just like, you know what? I think we're fine. <laughs> yeah. We're... We're not seeing any money come in, but we're also not seeing much of it come out. And but this is the definition right here of just having peace in the middle of the storm. Mm. We're in the middle of it, but yet oh, yeah. we're chilling. Yeah, yeah. Right that's beautiful. Out of it all, we're yeah. And I feel like a year ago, I would have been panicking so bad. Yeah. I think Man. last year, last year with our our slow season, I, I didn't work for like a week. Yeah. And I was yanking hairs out, like, man, I gotta get money. All this stuff has to get paid. This and this this year with this drought, it's been like a month and a like it's been like five six weeks. Yeah. And I'm not even tripping. I'm just money's come in from here from there, you know. Come on, don't move. This is one of those. Really detailed. Man, yeah, but what, I love what you guys are talking about right now. Um, there's something about... Uh, there's something... Do you, let me ask you guys, do you guys know how endurance is built? No. Yeah, how, how's endurance, just like in, a, in the most practical way, just how's it built, how's it developed, endurance? I don't think I've ever asked myself that question. It helps me endure. Um, worship me? That's how I do it, yeah. yeah. I worship when I don't feel like it, when I feel like putting my head between my hands and just screaming, yeah. that's when I feel like, yeah. okay, I gotta worship, I gotta get out of this, or... And he, that's my way of finding peace. Yeah. Sanity. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you just put it in like the the in the uh, uh, perspective of like an athlete, you know, endurance is typically built through painful experiences. Like you have to go through something painful to build up a level of endurance to that pain. So like an athlete, let's just take a marathon runner, to be able to get to a marathon, to run 26 point, I think it's 26.2 or 26.3 miles, they first have to run three miles, right? And then six miles. And each mile is painful in itself. You know, to run three miles, if you've never ran before, you're going to be hurting. But once you've ran three miles three times, three miles doesn't seem so bad anymore, right? Then you run six miles. Yeah, you, you grow, you know, you grow through that, you build up more stamina, more, more, uh, it's this uh, ability to endure um, as, as you elevate in that specific thing, right? So um, by the time that they run 26.2 miles, they're not, they're, they've already, they've already been able to get, uh, they've already endured like all the other hard times of you know being like when when even getting to 18 miles getting to 20 23 miles whatever it is right they've built up that endurance to that pain 
Yeah. So when, when they're, they're in the middle of running this marathon and they're at 18 miles and, they, and they're like, ah, oh, dude, like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get to the next, you know, get through the next, you know, six miles or whatever, how many, however much is left. They can remember that they've already done 18. They already know, you know, what that feeling felt like, you know. And so they're able to get themselves past that. It's the same thing when you're in the middle of a storm. The only reason why you guys are probably finding more peace in this moment compared to other moments is that you've already been through this moment multiple times. And in each season, in each moment that you've been in a place where you're like, God, I don't got work. I'm, I'm stressing. Like you've stressed, you've worried, you've taken things into your own hands of trying to go and find work and do all this stuff. Well, each time that you go through something, there was something that God was teaching you on how to depend on him or how to trust in him or build more faith, you know, develop more faith. And so now that you're in this season and you're again at the same, there's another mountain in front of you and you're able to look at it and say, man, I've gone through this 12 times already and I know how to, how to depend upon God. I know how to trust God in this moment. I know that also, you know, I need to, I, there's things that I have to do, but it's completely different. You don't see it as stressful, as painful as, as it once was, you know? It's like David and Goliath. David had to go through it with the lion, the bear, all the things that would come against, the, against his, his flock. So when it came time to go up against Goliath, he didn't see a challenge. He was just like, man, I've been doing this. You've been doing this, man. He's been wrestling these things, you know? Putting in reps. Exactly, man. Exactly. And that's, you know, endurance, endurance leads to, uh, to um, the, like, you know, to, uh, uh, endurance will lead you to increasing your faith. It's, it goes hand in hand, you know? Um, think about it. In Hebrews, in Hebrews 11, it's, it's known as the hall, hall of Faith. Have you, have you guys read Hebrews 11? Probably have. Skim through it. I don't remember it. It's, it's, it's just a, the hall of faith. It's all the faithful men and women who ran this race of, of, of living for Christ, who ran it and were found faithful at the end of, of their life, right? And all they had to endure. Because in, in, in Hebrews, the author is encouraging the believers of that, of that, of that time to stand firm in their faith, to not be wavered, you know, to not fall back, because in that moment they were falling back into um, old sins, old customs. You know, they were getting persuaded and, uh, and 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 being set back, right? So the author is telling them, like, yo, don't you remember all these faithful men and women who endured persecution, hardship after hardship, like gone through so many things, right? Like, look back at that and and be encouraged that. Because of their endurance, because of their ability to stand firm, even though they were in the middle of storms multiple times after time after time, that God was able to find them faithful at the end of their life, you know? So, stop panicking, reflect on what you come from and know everything you're doing. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It'd be, it'd be ignorant to not, like, uh, to not um uh to say like to go through a storm and be like oh i'm not gonna do anything in this storm god's got me god is still requiring of us to do something in the middle of the storm you know he does have you but he's also asking you to act in the middle of it you know to do some things too so that you can make it through as well right yeah he can he can stop the storm in a moment like that what did you know pastor matt not too long ago was preaching about uh um being on the boat, right? And the disciples were like, they were crossing the sea, right? And he woke up and, and they were panicking and they were scared because of the storm. But the first thing that he did was calm it right away, right? And it's like, he can do that. Yeah. He can. What are we going to learn from that? Exactly. What are we going to learn if he just does that, right? He's trying to teach us something in the midst of storms. He wants us to actually, to act too in the middle of the storm. To depend on him, but not just to, not just to sit there and, 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 and do nothing, you know? Just twiddle your thumbs. Yep. Because then we then we would go through life like that all the time. Like we get into ourselves into a whatever mess. God's gonna get me out of it. Yeah, he's gonna get me out of it. No, he ain't. No, he ain't. You put, you put yourself in that. He didn't put you in that mess. 
So you best believe he'll help you get out of it, but it's gonna take it's gonna take some sacrifice and it's gonna take some work on your end, you know? That's one of those things that when I looked at the story of when was it John or Peter that walked out that stepped it was Peter. Off of Peter, right? Yeah. So my favorite part about that story is that Peter was a fisherman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the fishermen in their time, these guys weren't just... They, they were seasoned veterans, veterans, man. They right, knew what to, to do, do. yep. Right, and and you can't just be a fisherman without knowing how to swim. you got to be a master swimmer. Mm-hmm. And what's funny to me about that story, him stepping off the boat, is that when he started to sink, he started to panic. Yeah. And yeah, it's it's cool to walk on water, you know, step out in faith, do, oh, yeah, man. do things, do what Jesus does, and, and follow Jesus. But what had me laughing was the fact that Peter was a master swimmer. Why was he panicking? Yeah, yeah, yeah dude. That's the reason he started sinking is because he his own fear gave permission for his body to just start to sink. Yeah, yeah. dude. Yeah. Took, Took his, his eyes, eyes off, off of off of Jesus, you yeah. know. Yeah. Right, and when you're not walking on water, get to swimming, man. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Swim, swim on that thing, man. So for me, at, at least in this season, I'm swimming. Dude. You know? But I ain't sinking. You ain't, I'm man. I'm floating. The water's at my neck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'm at peace because I know I can swim. There, there you go, go dude. There and you yeah, go. Every once in a while, there's a little fish that'll come and take a bite. You know, Nibble. I'm not starving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, or you, you take, take a bite, bite out of that fish. fish. <laughs> Say, man, I want some ahi tuna. Devour this thing. No, yeah, man, that's that's so true. That's good, man. Finding contentment too in the season that you're in. In the, in the, it, dude, can you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's so good. And even, uh, even you know, to the other stream is like instead of asking him to remove this obstacle the situation from your life or get you out of the situation is asking him lead me through the situation how do i how do i navigate in the middle of this like you don't got to take it away but be with me and and lead me through it you know there's a level of spiritual maturity oh yeah when when it definitely definitely that's true you 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 definitely have to be at a level of uh of of faith and 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 trust in him and um in a way you know Mm-hmm. I feel like that's just in general, people, not just Christians. Yeah, you're right. People, I'm, I'm finding a lot of I'm finding a lot of women stuck in this high school mentality. Mm. It's like we get stuck there. What What is that? Um, like, what is that mentality? What do you feel is the biggest, the 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 biggest thing that they're holding on to? In, in in this in it's something I'm even struggling with. We care too much about what other people think. Mm. For women that we I can't speak for men, yeah. but at least for women, we care way too much. That's why we over analyze mm-hmm. ourselves and stress. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I, I think that's something that's a thing that's pretty universal. I wouldn't say it's just mm-hmm. on women, I think you know, it's, it's, it's got to do, it's a lot of men as well, you know, uh, would deal with that. I know that I've had my fair share of, of, of bouts, you know, it's like thinking, what is this person going to think of me if I, you know, if I, if I fully believe in this or if I'm, you know, uh, um, um, fully like proclaiming this, you know, it's like, I used to, yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man! Don't talk about offense, yo. <laughs> Don't talk that's about more it. of a generational. Thing that's yeah. Point. That's more. Yeah. It's like so much so, like in the church, I've noticed preachers have had to change their sermons, switch. Word it differently because they don't want to hurt feelings. Yeah. I don't think that's how God is, though. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he doesn't really care about. No. Jesus straight up said, "There's a door right there. Walk out." <laughs> yeah. 
you know, there's this level of, um, of grace, you know, that we should walk in for sure. Um, and I mean, and even like, I, I always see this throughout the, throughout scripture is uh, anytime that Jesus encountered anybody, I mean, first of all, whenever he encountered somebody, met with somebody, like life was changed. It was like transformational, you know, the yeah. person didn't leave the same, you know, S- something happened. And, uh, I think in his, in his, um, in his, uh, his approach was always with compassion, with love, with grace, you know. But with correction as well, like he was correcting a lot of individuals. You know oh, yeah. what I'm saying? And uh, um, I think we ha- we ought to learn from that on how we approach in, uh, how we approach moments and situations where we have to correct. You know, and we have to do it with like we we have to approach it in love and in compassion with grace. Right? I don't think there's enough. Uh, there's probably hasn't been enough experiences in that individual's life to do that or whoever it is, right? That, uh, um, where they can say like, well, I don't know. They probably don't know how to do that. They've always been taught it's just this way and they approach it, just hammer to the nail, boom, just lay down the law. Right. Yeah. And it's not, uh, it's not always the, uh, the, the best or most effective way to do that. There's moments where it's for sure, like it's necessary, you know, but, um, we have, we have to be emotional. We have to have that emotional EQ, you know? It's looking good, bro. It is looking great. I've seen glimpses in the mirror, and I'm excited. All right. Uh, let me uh, just get you to lift up your neck one more time. <laughs> Kristen, how do you like that shape on his beard? Looks cool, huh? Yeah. I like it. Yeah. All right. I'm going to style this thing up for you. Yeah, you were talking earlier about spiritual maturity, just maturity in general. I think everyone has a, you know, that, that maturity looks different for everyone. You know, they're, everyone's yeah. on a different level, different path. But I think we can say that it, although, although everyone's on a different path, on a different level, it, it all leads to the same thing, which is just being more like Jesus. Yeah. Growing spiritually is growing to be more like him in every aspect of your life, right? Maturing maturing as a believer is becoming more like him throughout our life. Always being always being learners, right? Never stopping that. But I think some people lie about their maturity, you know? Where they're at. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> Yeah, it's gonna come out. You, yeah. You'll be you'll be able to tell. You know, people will be able to tell where that's at. It's gonna speak. You know. Exactly. That's why businesses have that thirty day period of uh, what do they call it? Probation period. Yeah. The reason they do three months is because you can only keep a fake character. The average person should only keep a fake character for about thirty to forty days. No way, bro. I've been doing it for like. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, see, but I've been if, acting as a barber. If you stick around, if you stick around long enough, you'll find out. Pretty good actor. I'm a pretty good actor. Huh? Yeah. I've actually just taken on the role, you know. I'm just like, shoot, whatever. I know for a fact I've hired some people that at first they they did seem to know what they were talking about. Yeah, yeah. They may have done their research just to get the job, or or they may have done their research and and for a specific task. Yeah. But after a while, you 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 begin to notice like. Uh, this guy's kind of lazy. He was on it at first. At first, huh? Because he was trying to, but now that he's he's been here for you know 20, 30 days, yeah, this dude's this dude's slacking. And then I, I'd go and tell them something, and they just wouldn't change. And it's because they would be able to put up that front for a certain amount of time before the, the real person starts to show up. Yeah, and it's like, oh, you just do things like this. Okay, so I know I can't trust you by yourself. And you'll end up taking a shortcut and costing me more money down the road. And that's where I feel like a lot of people in, in, in general just, they don't, they don't know that they should be a certain way all the time. Yeah. 
and they think yeah. I'm just being real. <laughs> and it's not that I need you to be fake. I just need you to be who you need to be instead yeah. of being who you are. And that's that's <laughs> yeah. one of those pieces of advice that a lot of people give. Like, just be who you are. Be yourself. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be yourself. Yourself in it, you know, in its nature is lazy because nobody wants to do anything yeah be this other guy be the person you admire you know because being the person you admire or even if you're just pretending at first eventually you'll become that yeah yeah that's good man instead check of, that out Ooh, man let me get this hold on hold on let me uh can you need you need eyeglasses or what no nah. i'm gonna get closer Here, go go get up a little bit hold on There you go. Woo wee! I'm getting laid tonight. Cheese! <laughs> Talk about me, baby. Yeah. Move this camera out the way. I'm gonna. <laughs>